It is the 1980s and you are late to a very important business meeting in some fancy downtown building on the 69th floor. You are five minutes late when you hop into an elevator just in time. Then the unthinkable happens. The elevator stops and you are stuck. Screaming for help, no one hears your cries. Hours go by before anyone even notices you are missing. The only thing keeping your sanity is the two hour loop of soft instrumental jazz music piped into your metal prison. That music is known as Muzak. If it was the 1970s, you'd probably hear Muzak everywhere. At the mall, at the airport, the grocery store, even in commercials and on the radio. Radio had specific stations known as beautiful music stations that would play these soft jazz instrumentals. Nowadays, all we have is just literally pop songs with 808 drum machines and lyrics about drugs and fucking wherever you go. But it wasn't always like this. In this video, I will explain the history of the brief music phenomena, which changed aural pleasure for years to come. In the 1910s, Chief Signal Officer of the U.S. Army George Owen Squire invented something known as multiplexing, which allowed for multiple analog signals to be carried in one stream and be delivered to various locations. With this, multiple telephone calls could be transferred all at once. Then in the 1920s, George Owen Squire thought to himself, if I can transfer multiple audio streams over wires, then I can transfer music over wires and charge people. So he did that very thing and invented Spotify of the 1920s, only then it was called wired radio. Then in the 1930s, people weren't as interested in transferring audio over wires, mostly because radio technology was getting better and mostly cheaper. People were listening to music without wires. Then in 1934, while sick and dying of pneumonia, George Squire changed the name of Wired Music Company to Muzak because he really liked the film manufacturer Kodak. After George Squire died, his company was sold to Warner Brothers in 1937, where the company shifted its focus from Wired Music to deliver music to commercial clients such as businesses and factories. Then, during the whole World War II thing, the company was bought by entrepreneur William Benton, who worked his way through the advertising industry and negotiated deals to make a bunch of educational Disney films in the 40s. He also published Encyclopedia Britannica, which is like Encyclopedia Dramatica, but for old people. During this time, Muzak recorded tens and thousands of original recordings for businesses. But everything changed when company researchers noticed that Muzak apparently made workers happier and more productive. especially especially during times of war. This was known as stimulus progression, which offered 15 minute blocks of background music to give workers a sense of forward movement and relax workers. This was also followed by 15 minutes of silence, mostly because someone had to turn the record over to hear the next 15 minutes. But that analog vibration was so warm and quality, said someone who doesn't know what they're talking about. Now with science numbers backing the Muzak brand, Muzak took the world by storm and you can hear soft jazz instrumentals everywhere. Even the White House, when Dwight Eisenhower's administration became the first president to use Muzak. In fact, later President Lyndon Johnson owned the Austin, Texas franchise of Muzak. Then because of communism and good old-fashioned 50s paranoia, Muzak was taken to court over accusations of brainwashing. The only real evidence for subliminal music training comes from a particular study where scientists would play French music in a store, causing French foods to be sold more, and then they would play German music the next day, and then a lot of people would buy German food the most. The Muzak sound became the definitive sound of the 1950s and 60s. You couldn't go anywhere without hearing the arranged jazz string orchestra with marimbas in horn section. Then the counterculture generation was born, also known as the generation that may or may not have fucked everything up with their entitlement issues. Suddenly music wasn't cool anymore, and stores began playing popular radio tunes known as foreground music instead of instrumental soft jazz background music. Then, during the 1980s, popular musician Ted Nugget tried to buy Muzak for $10 million because he was like, Muzak stands for the establishment and I'm anti- He looks like this now. Then in the 1990s, Muzak tried to do a satellite music service because Muzak was literally based around inconvenience in the first place. After several bad business ventures, mostly because nobody wanted to buy satellite music in a post-9-11 world, Muzak filed for bankruptcy in 2009 when they no longer 
longer had a place in modern society, as people literally turned on the radio and made elaborate music playlists on their iPhones. And then with that, uh, elevator music was no more and nobody ever heard it ever again. Just kidding, in 2011, a Canadian company known as Mood Music bought Muzak for $345 million. And this has been a brief history of the company known as Muzak. If you want to make your own elevator music, all you got to do is hire some musicians fresh out of college or something and then arrange something for them and then record it in a giant massive studio and then put it on a vinyl disc and then uh, sell it out of, I guess, like the back of your car on like the boardwalk of Venice Beach or some shit.